Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video, this time taking a look at builds for the AK-74 and the RPK-16, from budget to top tier meta setups together in one video. Any rifle from the AK-74 series is very common to find out there in Tarkov, and it's been a staple of the early and mid game for as long as I can remember. The AK-74M is very easy to find, it's cheap to buy on the market, and generally has very decent stats for budget and mid tier builds. Originally, I wanted to cover these rifles alongside the AKM and AK-103 since the builds are very similar, but I figured it would actually make more sense to compare the AK-74 with its direct competitor, the RPK-16. The RPK is for all intents and purposes in Tarkov an upgraded AK-74M. It fires the same ammo, uses the same magazines, many of the same attachments, and fires at the same rate. While the base rifle is more expensive than an AK-74, it needs much less modding to be effective. This means that you can generally build a better rifle for the same price using the RPK-16, and by the end of this video I hope you see that it's almost always better to use an RPK and it's generally the same price to build. Like the AKM, there's a ton of different variants for the AK-74, but for this video I'll be focusing on the AK-74M and AK-74N, the two most popular variants and the two that you should stick with. So with that intro out of the way, let's take a look at some builds. To start this video off, of course we've got the budget setups for the AK-74 and the RPK, using only level 2 traders, unlocked around level 10 to 15. In my opinion, these rifles are a great choice for early to mid game raids since it's quite easy to find the AK-74M on scavs and in crates, and you can often find big boxes of BT ammo lying around to pick up and use in these rifles. While the RPK might not be as common to find as the AK-74M, you can still buy it on the flea market once you hit level 10, and the price is quite stable on the market because it's dropped by Killa, Scav Raiders, Cultus, and Boss Guards. Starting with the AK-74M, we'll be using the base price of around 25 to 30,000 rubles off the flea market. The first attachment you want for this is the DTK-1 Compensator from Skier Level 2. If you want to run a suppressor on 545 rifles, the TGP-A is the best choice for recoil, the Hexagon has slightly better ergonomics, and the PBS-4 is by far the cheaper option. All three are fairly similar though, and you won't notice a massive difference. Next, you can get the CAA RS-47 handguard from Peacekeeper Level 2, which allows you to attach extra accessories. For the grip, I'm using the Zenit RK-4 from Skier Level 2 as the best option at this level. I've also got the X400 flashlight on here, but you can swap this for your preferred attachment. Next, you want to attach the Bastion Dust Cover, which gets you a sight mount as well as some extra recoil control. For the sight on these builds, I'll be using the Cobra Reflex Sight with the Sight Shade attachment on all of them to stay consistent, but you can swap this for whatever you prefer. To finish off the build, first I add the PP-19 Pistol Grip for some cheap ergonomics, and then the GP-25 Recoil Pad for the basic AK stock for extra recoil control. This exact same build will work on pretty much any AK-74 rifle, and I'm pretty sure the only change you'll need is to swap the wooden stock out for the black polymer stock. When this build is all put together, you're looking at 72 recoil for the AK-74M and 75 recoil on the 74N, with around 60 ergonomics total. The total cost is around 75 to 85,000 rubles, depending on how much you pay for the rifle, and overall it's a fairly effective and relatively cheap build. Now let's quickly compare this to a budget RPK build, which at this level can either be found on Killa or from Raiders, or you can buy it on the flea market for between 50 to 60,000 rubles, and sometimes even cheaper. The base price of the RPK is quite a bit higher, but the base stats are also much better and you don't need to replace most of the parts, which makes the build almost the same cost. The RPK also uses many of the same attachments, so some of the upgrades from the AK-74M just pop right onto this one. First, you add the Zenit DTK-1 Compensator for the extra recoil control. You can also use the TGPA or the Hexagon Suppressor if you want to run silent. Next, I add the same RK-4 grip from Skier Level 2, and then the X400 flashlight as well. For the pistol grip, this is where I change things up a little bit. Since you don't need to swap the handguard or buy a new dust cover, I take that money and buy the Tapco saw style pistol grip for the extra ergonomics. Finally, the stock on here is just the default AK-12 stock that comes with the rifle. So with these minimal changes to the default RPK build, we end up with 66 recoil and around 65 ergonomics for a total of around 85,000 rubles. That's 6 less points of recoil for an identical price. Really, the only thing that I don't like about this setup is that you're relying on the RPK flea market price to remain stable, but I still think it's pretty much worth it. Thank you. 
Next up, we're moving into the mid-tier builds for the AK-74 and the RPK, using level 3 traders and level 4 peacekeeper, all of which can be unlocked by level 30 at the latest. Like the AKM and AK-103, these builds are really the sweet spot for the AK-74 and RPK. You get the stats down to a very manageable level without investing too much extra money or getting too fancy. Even once I pass level 40, I still find myself running the mid-tier builds for the AK because dropping an extra 50k just for a few points of recoil isn't always necessary. Once again, for this section, we'll be starting with the AK-74M and then comparing it to the RPK afterwards. First up, you want to swap the muzzle device over to the JMAC RRD 4C Compensator for Mechanic Level 3, the best in slot part for the 545 AKs. The handguard on this one is the Zenit B10M handguard sold by Skier Level 3. This has the same stats as the RS-47 from the last build, but it allows you to attach the Zenit B33 dust cover which has extra recoil stats and can only be used with the B10 or the B30 handguards. The foregrip on this build has been upgraded to the Zenit RK1 from Skier Level 3, which gives you extra recoil control compared to most other foregrips. I've also got the X400 flashlight on this build, but you can swap this for whatever you prefer. The pistol grip has also been changed for the Tapco saw style grip, which has amazing stats for the price, and is probably the most cost effective pistol grip for the AKs. For the stock, you have two options that'll work well here. First, you can just leave on the default stock and attach the GP25 recoil pad. If you want to invest a bit more though, you could swap to the Zenit PT3 Classica stock on a PT lock adapter for extra stats in all categories. For the AK-74N, you can also use the Polymer AK stock with the GP25 recoil pad, or you can swap this out for the Zhukov S stock at Peacekeeper level 4 for better stats all around. Finally, the last piece on the build is the RP1 charging handle for the extra ergonomics. When this build is all put together, you're looking at around 59 recoil at the lowest and 65 recoil at the highest, depending on what variant you use and what stock you select. For ergonomics, it's around 60 to 65, again depending on which AK and stock you choose. For the total cost, you're looking at between 100 to 120,000 rubles total, depending on whether you upgrade the stock or just use the basic one with the rubber pad. Now comparing this to the RPK-16, once again we're going to end up with very similar stats at a very similar price. The only thing really holding the RPK back at this level is the fact that the extended barrel is unlocked at proper level 4, around level 34. So technically it doesn't qualify in this build using only level 3 traders, but I'll be mentioning it anyways. First up, you want to swap the muzzle device for the PWS CQB Compensator, which is the best in slot option for the RPK since it doesn't accept the JMAC Compensator. Next up, the foregrip on this build is the much cheaper Zenit RK5, which I used because the RPK has higher base stats, but you can also stick with the RK1 for extra recoil control if you want to. There's also an X400 flashlight on here, but feel free to swap this for your preferred part. The pistol grip is the same Tapco saw grip from Peacekeeper Level 2, but this time I've swapped the stock out for the MFT BUS stock, which is still a great choice for fairly cheap recoil focused builds in the 12.9 patch. Finally, I've also added the Zenit RP1 charging handle for the extra ergonomics. When this build is all put together, you're looking at 59 recoil and around 69 ergonomics total, for about 115,000 rubles. That's 10k cheaper than the AK-74M with the same stats, so again the RPK comes out on top in the mid-tier builds. You can also swap the barrel out for the 22 inch RPK barrel if you have proper level 4, which will run you about 11,000 rubles after you sell the old one, and then your recoil falls down to 54 points for a pretty small investment. Finally, we're going to take a look at the meta recoil focus builds for the AK-74 and RPK-16, which is where the RPK really takes the win over the older AK-74. While the budget and mid-tier builds were almost identical in price, the fully built RPK beats the AK-74M in stats while also being around 20k rubles cheaper to build, which is all around a win-win kind of situation. Unfortunately, the RPK did receive a pretty big nerf to its recoil numbers in the 12.9 patch, but even with that being said, it's still a pretty solid choice in my opinion, and it's my preferred 545 setup. Starting with the AK-74M, replace the muzzle device with the JMAC RRD4C Compensator. 
Next, the handguard is the VL Tor CMRD handguard from Mechanic Level 4, which will take a pair of key mod rails to add attachments. For the grip, I've got the Zenit RK2 on here for maximum recoil reduction, as well as an X400 flashlight for my tactical device. Next, I've got the Bastion dust cover once again, and then the Aeronox Scorpius pistol grip for best in slot ergonomics. For the stock, I'm using the PT3 Classica stock on a PT lock adapter, which has the top tier stats in both ergonomics and recoil for the 74M. On an AK-74N, you'll want to use the Zhukov S stock or just stick with the default stock with the GP25 recoil pad. Finally, I've got the RP1 charging handle as well for the extra ergonomics point. When this build is all put together, you're looking at 55 recoil on the AK-74M and about 60 recoil on the AK-74N with about 70 ergonomics total. The whole build will run you about 165,000 rubles if you buy all the parts, so it's quite a big jump up from the mid-tier build. Now we'll compare this to the RPK-16, and the first thing you'll need is the extended 22-inch RPK barrel from Proper Level 4. Then you'll want to add the PWS CQB Compensator for maximum recoil reduction. Next, I've got the Zenit RK-1 foregrip on this build. You can use the RK-2 here if you want, but it only gets you one extra point of recoil, unlike the AK-74M. I've also got the X400 flashlight on here, but you can swap this for whatever you prefer. The pistol grip on this one is the Tapco saw grip again, since it's only one point away from best in slot and the RPK doesn't work with the Scorpius grip. The stock on this build is the MOE carbine stock with the rubber butt pad attachment, which I believe is all around the best stock that you can fit onto the RPK. Finally, the finishing touch on this build is the RP1 charging handle for the extra ergonomics point. When this is all put together, you're looking at 51 points of recoil and around 64 ergonomics total, for a total cost of about 145,000 rubles. So for 20k less, you get better stats than the AK-74 meta build, and it needs fewer parts to complete the build so it's quicker to put together. All around, I say that's a win, and it's why I just ditched the AK-74 and moved over to the RPK almost completely. Well that about covers it for these builds for the AK-74 and the RPK-16 in Escape from Tarkov. While overall I do feel the AK-74 is still a more practical choice for budget builds at lower levels, once you can start getting the RPK off the market for a decent price between 50 to 60,000 rubles, I really think it's a better option if you want to run 5.45 setups. 5.45 is in a weird spot as of the making of this video, since a lot of the early game ammo that you can buy from the traders is pretty bad, and the late game ammo is very expensive from the traders. But personally, I feel that you can find enough good ammo in boxes and from scab bosses to pretty much negate the price factor. Personally, I've been killed by 545 BT rounds through good armor enough times to feel that people exaggerate when they say that it's not good. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed these builds and let me know what you think down below. Thanks for checking out the video. I've got links to my Twitch channel, Discord server, and Patreon page down below for anyone interested. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.